Back in 1831, four Indians, including three Nez Perce from the tribe who had helped Lewis and Clark survive their time in the Pacific Northwest, traveled eastward over the mountains and across the plains nearly 2,000 miles to St. Louis. They had come, they said, because they had heard of a black book that gave whoever possessed it additional power and prestige. They were looking for the Bible, and they thought that they would get uh, power from it, just like that they would get from uh, their Wyokin. Ian's journey made its way into the Protestant missionary press. The Nez Perce, it said, were pleading for salvation. In the spring of 1836, a small party of missionaries responded and began the long trek from Missouri to the British trading post of Fort Vancouver along a route that would soon be called the Oregon Trail. In the deserts let me labor, on the mountains let me tell how he died, the blessed Savior, to redeem a world from hell. Let me hasten, let me hasten, far in heathen lands to dwell. Among the Christian pioneers were Dr. Marcus Whitman and his young wife, Narcissa who, from her earliest childhood, had dreamed of becoming a missionary. She had married Whitman specifically to go west and spread the word of Christ to those in need of it. Our desire now is to be useful to these benighted Indians, teaching them the way of salvation. It is a great responsibility to be pioneers in so great a work. It is with cautious steps that we enter on it. Narcissa Whitman. Well, I don't think she really knew what she was going out to do in the West. She'd grown up reading, consuming uh, voraciously the literature of the missionary movement of her day, and she thought she was going out to live out a scenario that she had really read about. That is, she would arrive, hopefully be welcomed, and somehow bring about this monumental conversion of the people with whom she worked. Um, she had no real ideas at all as to what the West was like or what missionary work would be like. While other missionaries went to the Nez Perce, the Whitmans settled at a place called Wailapu, on the north bank of the Walla Walla River, in the land of the Cayuse. Things did not go well for the Whitmans. Tilukeik, a Cayuse chief, welcomed them, but wondered why they failed to offer gifts, as was the Cayuse custom. His people could not understand why the Whitmans insisted they must completely abandon their own faith. And they were insulted when Narcissa barred them from her parlor. The Indians said they would worship in our new house. We told them our house was to live in, and we could not have them worship there, for fear they would make it so dirty and full of fleas that we could not live in it. I think Narcissa really didn't like them at all. And that she saw them as everything that was the polar opposite of what she loved and valued. The kinds of words that she uses, savage, ignorant, lazy, um, heathenish, um, the way she called her, her mission uh, station a dark and savage place, give you some sense of this emotional response to people whom she couldn't understand who frightened her and who wouldn't change in the ways that she really thought they ought to change for their own good. Narcissa had given birth to a daughter, Alice. 
But at age two, the little girl drowned in the river next to the mission. Grieving and lonely, Narcissa sometimes went two years without a letter from home. Each day, she and the other missionary wives in the region paused to pray for each other and their families. I've always found it to be very poignant, a sign of their loneliness and how difficult it was and how they tried to communicate with one another through their spirits. During their first years, the Whitmans managed to convert one Scottish visitor, one French-Canadian Catholic, and several Hawaiian laborers who worked for the mission. But they failed to make a single convert among the Cayuse. Never was I more keenly sensible to the self-denials of a missionary life. Even now, while I am writing, the drum and the savage yell are sounding in my ears, every sound of which is as far as the east is from the west, from vibrating in unison with my feelings. Dear friends, will you not sometime think of me almost alone in the midst of savage darkness?